Welcome to Launch, the GCC podcast. I'm your host, Marty Duran, Director of Communications for the Great Commission Collective. We're a global network of churches partnering together to plant churches and strengthen leaders. My guests today on Launch are Kent Dresdo and Steve Croker and another new pastor's roundtable, Kent Pastors out in the Bay Area of uh, California, and Steve Pastors up in uh, the Toronto area in a suburb, I think, called Georgetown. Uh, glad to have these guys. This is a really good conversation. Uh, they really get into it with each other um, about the Bible and the books that they love and sports and uh, lots of things like that. So this is a great conversation. I hope that when you have a chance that you'll get to know these guys because they are pretty awesome. So thanks for hanging out, guys. This is really cool. I hope you guys are doing well, and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Uh, the last one had three guys on it. It was, um, Steve, you know um, Julian Freeman, right? Yeah. Okay. And then a guy from Chicago named Jorge Rodriguez, and then a guy from Florida named Ryan Burgess. And it went really well. So this will be like 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And it could be freewheeling, so don't figure – I mean, don't, really don't – feel like that this is some kind of a job interview or performance thing or something like that. We can, we can talk about sports and all kinds of stuff, whatever you, uh, what, whichever way the conversation goes, I want it to be really loose. So I'll count us down and then we'll jump right in. Uh, this is launch episode 27, I think three, two, one. Well, I'm really glad to have like, this is like East and West today because I've got, <laughs> Steve Croker, who's on the eastern side of Canada, and Kent Dresdo. Did I? Is it Dresd? It is Dresdo, right? Yeah, correct. I probably should have asked that before I started recording, but here we are. Uh, and you're all the way out. Like, can you smell the salt water from where you are? Yeah, about forty-five minutes away. Yeah, oh, we're close. Man. Yep, yep. Ocean Beach. I don't like. I don't get jealous of that very often, but like, I think today <laughs> is one of those days. <laughs> It's nice, man. It's nice. That is awesome. So yeah. um, I really appreciate you guys uh, hanging out today. Um, you guys are new to GCC, and I want to give um, the other pastors a chance. If they haven't had a chance to interact with you, even online or by phone or something like that, a chance to hear you, kind of get to know your voices and your hearts a little bit. And then when you are able to meet guys in person, they feel like that they know you already or at least have a baseline or something like that. So first, welcome to GCC. Really, really glad that God's brought you our way. So glad to be here. Yeah, we've been really, really blessed to be part of GCC. Yeah, agreed. Same. It's been a, it's been an unbelievably fruitful partnership in the limited amount of time that we've been a part of it. That's mm-hmm. that's really good. So, Steve, I'm going to start with you because uh, we want to show some honor to the Canadians uh, because you guys don't get a lot of love from America a lot of times. So, I want to I want to rectify that right now. Uh, honor you by letting you going first. Um, so tell everybody like who you are, where you're pastoring, maybe a little bit about how you went into the ministry, some, some of that kind of stuff. Sure. So yeah, Steve Croker. Uh, I pastor Living Hope Church in Georgetown, Ontario, now part of Great Commission Collective. I've been here. I've been the lead pastor of this church for one year. I was hired by the previous pastor of this church who had pastored it for 32 years. He hired me as his successor wow. in an intentional transition plan. So I've been here for two years, one year as the lead pastor. Previously, I had I was born and raised in Vancouver. So I pastored a church out in the suburbs of Vancouver, BC for the 10 years previous. Um, went to seminary in Portland, uh, Oregon at Western Seminary. Oh, wow. And, uh, but yeah, my wife's family's from out in Ontario and the Lord led us out here and we're really glad to be here and, and now part of GCC. Well, I feel like I have to tell every Canadian that British Columbia is, um, a wife and I's favorite place on the planet. We've been there several times, uh, had our 15th anniversary in Alberta, but our 25th anniversary we spent in British Columbia. And we just love that mm. side of, we've never even been to the Eastern side. Sorry. No, <laughs> it, BC is beautiful. Alberta is beautiful. It's great. That's awesome. So Kent, <laughs> uh, a little bit of the same for you. How did you, um, where are you? What's, what's the name of your church and how did you wind up there? Yes. I'm a uh, senior pastor at North Creek church. I've been in this role for three years. Steve, it's cool to hear a little bit about your story because it's similar to mine in the sense that I, I transitioned into the senior pastoral role after having been at um, after having been at North Creek for the past 12 years. So it's been fantastic to watch the Lord be faithful to this church, 
faithful to us, our former senior pastor in the transition that went really, really well. And um, before that, on staff here in 2004, I was at um, Masters down in LA, where I was sat down there for doing school for about 11 years, met my wife down there. And, uh, and then when we moved up here, now we have a family of five children. So it's super active, four teenagers. And uh, we are we are ripping through life right now, man. It's a blur. And ministry <laughs> is going warp speed, even through COVID. So wow. life is full and God has been very kind to us. Yeah. Super thankful to be here. So we have, uh, I think, two more, at least two more couples uh, in GCC, pastor and wife, who met at Masters. Um, let me think. The Snyders, I think, met at Masters. Yeah, and then ben, yeah and I know Sonia, Andy. Ben, ben and Sonia Dosti, I think, met at Masters as yeah. well. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. um, so what, what is, uh, what is ministry at, uh, Walnut Creek look like? Well, you know, I, I have said for a long time that, uh, ministry in California is good because there's not a lot of cultural Christianity here. And when you get into the Bay area, it's even less. Mm. And I love that actually. Mm. I, I love that there's not um, a fog of, you know, people being Christians because it's advantageous for them personally. There's no advantageous element to being a Christian in this area, but I love that. I yeah. love the, the clarity that that brings and the simplicity of gospel living here. Um, it's easy to witness to Christ in the sense that, um, the light shines more brightly here up against the darkness. Mm. Um, and we have seen the Lord do a ton of good things this past year in particular. As, as hard as it's been, it's been my hardest year of ministry for sure. Um, but just stay on the course and be a faithful gospel ministry has, I think, borne some good fruit by God's grace. So awesome. we have really been strengthened in the work, even for as hard as it's been. Um, so in my role, I, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm giving myself to preaching, leadership development, uh, overseeing the staff, working with the elders and the plurality there, uh, trying to reach the community for Christ and build up the saints here. That's fantastic. Steve, I would guess that his description of the, the uh, environment is not too terribly different than yours. No, it, it sounds pretty familiar. Um, yeah, yeah, very similar. I think like there's no cultural Christianity. Christianity is quite unpopular. Um, you know, it just you learn to embrace you're an outcast. Um, mm. Yeah, and I, I think... The West Coast of the U.S. feels, and uh, so I, I've traveled up and down the West Coast of the U.S. and then lived in Western Can Western Canada and Vancouver, and then I've only been out here for two years, and most of that's been COVID, so we're still getting to know the specifics <laughs> of the culture. But yeah, I think Canada largely is going to be a very similar feel to, to especially like Seattle, Portland, San Francisco, mm -hmm. kind of the experiences that I've had in those cities too. And I think there's pros and cons to that, but I think wherever you are, you embrace the pros and and be thankful for the Lord's positioning you into ministry because yeah. there's uh, you know, advantages and challenges and the Lord's sovereign where he places you. So Kent mentioned his uh, family a little bit. Why don't you tell us about yours? Yeah, I've been married for 16 years to Melissa. We, we met at Bible college. So that's similar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not a, it's not a great story. It's not an original story, but it is our story. So <laughs> we, we met and married in, in college. We have four kids who are uh, eight, 10, 12, and 14. So it's, they're fun. It's a good stage. We're enjoying it. And uh, yeah, so they're a lot of fun to be, to be living life with. So I understand that you're tall. Is that true? I'm told that. Yeah. I, I feel normal to me. I, I mean, I, looking I'm, over six foot, looking, I'm six foot three. Yeah. Okay. Looking out over the I'm crowds not, is normal. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm, I don't feel like I'm particularly tall. I feel like I'm normal, but. <laughs> so um, what, what book have you read recently that has really resonated with you in some, some special way? Oh, gee. Um, and you don't have well, to say it, the plurality principle. I know that's the one that's like within <laughs> hand's reach of everybody, but you don't have to say that one. Well, the first book that comes to mind here is Echoes of Exodus by Alistair Roberts and Andrew Wilson. I actually read it uh, maybe six months ago, but I'm returning to it because I'm going to be preaching in Exodus in the fall. It is a tremendous book, really entry-level biblical theology, tracing mm -hmm. the themes of Exodus, showing how the Exodus themes are actually throughout Scripture. Mm -hmm really like lay level entry level biblical theology of Exodus. It was so, so helpful, such an encouraging and excellent book. So there's one that just bounces to mind uh, as you ask that question. 
Very cool. Kent, what about you book wise? Man, Steve, I can't believe it. I'm, uh, I just got done preaching through Exodus for a year oh, cool. and a half. Brother, that is the book that carried us through COVID. I, I wow. could not believe how just staying with the next text up every Sunday mm -hmm. was absolutely, I mean, God so providentially used um, wow. multiple passages through Exodus this past year and a half. It's such an encouragement to hear that you're thinking about doing the same thing. Great Lord. Yeah. Yeah. We're starting yeah. in October, I think, through till about May. Oh, nice. Yeah. Good. I'm, I'm okay. pumped for it. We're, our preaching team's really like, we've, we've just been mapping out what, what text, what we can thinking through, you know, all that sort of stuff just in the last week, kind of nailing it all down. And um, yeah. we're pumped. We're pumped. It's going to be good. Uh, it's so so I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear That's you're so great. testifying to its fruitfulness. Oh yeah, man. It is the gospel in the old Testament through and through, mm -hmm. right? Just love yeah. it. Yeah. Such a blessing. Okay. Well, Hey, Steve, I would say, um, to follow along with that, I have been hugely blessed just by giving myself to reading Reichen's commentary on Exodus. Mm. Um, I, if you're asking me for a book that I've read cover to cover, I, I just lived in that book for the past 18 months. There's a bunch of other commentaries and works that have been helpful, mm -hmm. but the ways that he just so easily and naturally moves from the text to Christ mm. um, and then to the people of God. Oh man, it has mm. been an, a, just an absolute gold mine for me, just personally, my own walk with the Lord. Um, and, and learning from him. In fact, I actually thought about sending an email off to Reich and just letting him know how much of a blessing he has been to our church and to me, That's awesome. uh, having met him a couple of times. I think that might be hopefully something you, you, should, him you should do that. Yeah. I, you know, I, it reminds me, I once preaching through Galatians, Tom Schreiner's commentary on Galatians did that for me. I was so moved when I closed it after the last one, I felt moved of the Lord to write him. So I looked up his email address. I'd never, at the time I'd never met him. I took a class with him since then, but I emailed him just to say thank you. And he responded and was encouraged. And I, hopefully maybe that was the Lord moving me to encourage him to keep writing. Cause it changed, it changed and helped me so much in preaching that oh, book. Great. So you probably ought to as well, you know? Do it. Yeah. Good push. They, brother. They, they maybe just because they're famous doesn't mean they don't need encouragement. So, right. Right. And I've found normally that they're responsive, just like you said. So that's good. I appreciate that. Yeah. Hmm. Very good. Kent, what do you, um, when you're not sermon prepping and ministering to people and shepherding the flock of God and taking care of your family, that's going 5,000 miles an hour, what do you like to do? Um, I'm a huge sports fan, so much sometimes to the detriment of our church because I'll I'll bust out too many uh, sports illustrations, and <laughs> I, I hear from some people in our church, uh, including my wife, that I have reached my quota and need to back down. So I I try to moderate it. Uh, <laughs> is it idolatrous? Look, I don't know. I just don't know, and I'm not the best gauge. So it, I wasn't, give it wasn't in that Exodus commentary, so you're feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, yeah. thank you, yeah. thank you for that. I appreciate the encouragement. <laughs> it's got to not be idolatrous. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Hey, uh, I am, so, I so what still teams? Anything. What's that? What teams? Oh, bro, across the board, Bay Area teams. So okay. it's the Niners for football. It's the Giants for baseball. It's the it's the Warriors for basketball. Wow. And then for college football, it's the USC Trojans, which I know is probably highly offensive to some GCC pastors out there. But I just, I was down in LA, it got into me and I couldn't shake it when I came back up. And I just get, I get ripped by people up here because I, I should be a Cal fan and I'm just not. So I got to be low on my teams. So sports, uh, I like to golf, I like to bike, I like to mountain bike. I just electrified my bike. So now I have an electric bike, electric mountain bike. I'm never going back. Um, Wait, do, does that mean you don't even have to like pedal at all? I'd like to think that I, I assist. I assist the machine. So I'd like to I'm go with that. <laughs> and, uh, it's like living in the spirit. Yeah, th thank you. Yes. You're cycling, but it's so much more. That, yeah. My, my wife has one of those, like I, we got, she has had some uh, bad knee injuries. So she couldn't mm. bike with us as a family. So okay, we got yeah. an electric bike so she could pedal, but like she didn't have to like when we're in, you know, it, it wouldn't injure her again kind of thing. Yes. And, but I take it sometimes and just take it out for a rip and just keep the <laughs> throttle down and go as fast as I can. I'm flying like 45 kilometers an hour around the streets of Georgetown yes. having the time of my life. Uh, yes. So my wife and I both use it, but we use it very differently, but it's awesome. Yeah. Wait it's like the way you can care for your wife. It's the way you can care for your wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, for sure. Kilometers. But the spirit, that, you know, like you're, you're, you're pedaling, but the spirit really <laughs> makes it go. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> oh, man. So 45 kilometers, that's like 12 miles an hour, right? 
Oh, wow. I don't even know. I, I don't do, I don't do math. I can't do the conversion. Yeah, I think like 38 <laughs> or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Probably 30. Yeah. Sure. yeah. <laughs> so, um, Julian is a big, uh, I guess a, a Canadians fan or something. He's wearing a Jersey one day when yeah. I had him on a zoom. Yeah. Uh, and you guys, you, well, you guys have Canadian football. Are you a Canadian football fan? I I'm, I'm not. No, are you, are you, any I, we watch, fan? I think, I think Canadians in general are split between Canadian football um, which would be, you know, for some parts of the country would be a really probably the number two sport, but for other parts, like American football comes way ahead of that. So mm. I don't watch Canadian football. Um, I watch, I watch NFL football. I, I cheer for the green Bay Packers have since I was like 12 years old. Yeah, I, there you go. I read about Reggie white in the nineties. He was yeah, the minister yeah. of defense. I felt called to be a pastor when I grew up. He was a pastor, ordained yeah. minister, and the best defensive lineman in the NFL. So I started cheering for the Green Bay Packers, and I've yeah. cheered for them ever since. Um, hockey's number one across the country yeah. in every market. <laughs> um, but here in Toronto, because we have so many, you know, major teams, there's a lot. You know, there's NBA. Um, a lot of people che- here cheer for the Buffalo Bills for NFL, okay. and then the Blue Jays. Uh, not being a Toronto guy, I'm not really into i'm not really into those teams that much like i guess i would cheer for the raptors in nba and blue jays in baseball but i'm not really big into either sports um i grew up cheering for the vancouver canucks nhl mm-hmm. hockey team mm-hmm. who who are are not very good so it's it's not <laughs> like a, it's not like a joyful thing <laughs> but it, it, it's, suf- it's a suffering thing yeah, yeah. their burdens yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh Growing up on the Western side, uh, a lot of Americans don't know that Alberta has a real Texas, Oklahoma vibe. It's very yes. Western uh, cowboy. W- were you into that? Was that part of your influence growing up? No, not at all. I, okay. So BC and Alberta have a good rivalry going. And so I, I hated all that stuff. Like that okay. doesn't wow. like, I hate country music. I don't want to go live on the ranch. Thank you. So that's, that is like in Alberta is like Canada's Texas. BC is, would be more culturally very similar, I think to Washington and Oregon. Okay. And so you have kind of, there's, there's even movements to see BC break off and join and, and wow. Washington, Oregon and start Cascadia, our own country. So, yeah, there's kind of more of that. I think culturally, there's probably a closer alignment between, especially Vancouver, Seattle, Portland have a lot of similar vibes, progressive, multicultural, and yeah, a lot of the similar values and Alberta and the Canadian prairies would be more kind of your, yeah, Texas. Yeah, kind of ranching, farming yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. <laughs> I uh, that Cascadia thing. I actually wrote a short story a number of years ago about the like North America breaking up and becoming multiple countries. I'm not unique in that. A lot of people have written that kind of thing. Um, but Cascadia is. In, I don't think I used that one. I forget what I used. Maybe Pacifica or something like that. That Chrysler car. Um. Mm. So, uh, Steve. Um, what's the best concert you've ever been to? Oh, gee. Uh, uh, can I only one? I, that's tough. I mean, if, I mean, if you've got like transcendent experiences when you went to see the who or something, I mean, you can go ahead and roll that out. So, okay. One of my best, I don't know about picking a best. One of my best was the recently the, what was it? The 25th anniversary or is it 30th anniversary of the Joshua tree tour? Oh, yeah. When you two yeah. did the yeah. anniversary tour. <laughs> yeah. So I was like four years old when Joshua Tree came out, but it's one of the best albums ever. It's right? my, my favorite. So when they came through into Vancouver to do it, they, and I got, we got a uh, floor seat or like standing room, yeah. like standing seats. And I'm like 20 feet away from the drum kit for the wow. Joshua Tree set with my wife and c- another couple of good friends. And we got these amazing, amazing spot. Mumford and Sons open for them. So it was wow. just an unbelievable concert. Mm-hmm. Brilliant, just wonderful. And for them to play the album through, mm-hmm. you know, in order, you know, doing the early 80s stuff before that played the album through and then more modern music it was a phenomenal concert i've i remember radiohead when i was like 20 years old the night the last night of summer before i went back to college they played an outdoor concert just unbelievable night as a you know as a young man loved radiohead um mumford and sons i've seen a couple times and they're amazing just because they're literally the four guys are doing everything yeah i've seen them once all out so they're they're phenomenal as well so yeah what about it? Can't you yeah. been to the Hollywood Bowl recently? 
<laughs> yeah. I used to go there every year. We did when I was down in LA, that was a standard feature. I would take some uh, students down there from the college that I was the dean of students for. Um, but yeah, honestly, I'm not like a, I'm not a music guy. My kids give me a rough time for like, dad, you don't listen to any music at all. I'm like, no, no, I don't. I'll listen to like a podcast. I'll put some sports radio on. I am not going to be listening to music. So I just, I'm not a, opposed to it. Just doesn't come to mind. So that's yeah, I, I, I've always been like that. I don't know yeah. what my problem is with that. Um, so that's why I say I'm just kind of like unifocus on that. Yeah. And, um, but I appreciate hearing the story. So I think that's fantastic. Well, I can, I remember I, I'm pretty sure that Steve got your music enthusiasm at birth. And so you were like, you have a deficit, but he has extra. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thanks for balancing. I can, I I can throw in some more if you want, but <laughs> yeah, it's, good. it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> totally good. Yeah. You, you, you can cheer for like college football for me. That's great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> yep. Different gifts in the body. That's for sure. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> I'm totally a deficit with that one. Okay. Well, Ken, let's get, <laughs> let's, uh, let's go into an area where you will have a favorite. I think what, what's your favorite, uh, football game of all time then? Um, but probably the Super Bowl that the, the Niners won, um, where Montana threw the pass to John Taylor in the end zone to win it against the Bengals. What was that? 89 or something like that. Been a while. And uh, I remember watching, I mean, that's right when I was in the sweet spot of being a young guy. So mm -hmm. um, you're forging your, your fandom for the rest of your life in those years. Right. So I was watching with my dad, watching with my brother um, and we just went berserk. Mm -hmm. And then my favorite, can I just jump? My favorite world series moment was when the giants won the series in 2010 <laughs> Closed it out. And I seriously, you guys, it's so bad. I wept. I wept like a four-year-old boy. You know what I mean? Like I just was such, I was such a mess. I so really remember like what is happening to me. I was so fired up because it had been the first series in San Francisco history. So I was, I was like, yeah, that was good. Sweet moment. That is amazing. But I did. I don't want, I, I'm so glad no one captured that video. Like it just, that was a moment between me and my tv you know what i mean like i don't want i can't believe i'm actually sharing this you're right not now. even bringing jesus <laughs> into it that's amazing <laughs> i know i know i want to say it was inspired i don't think it was and why am i sharing this on a podcast this can't get displayed over now i don't know but yeah, there you go just being honest hey, that's look, my favorite get, sports moment i get weepy every time this is no no lie. i get weepy every time i watch the uh uh the replays of secretariat's uh triple crown runs yes every time yep yep that's amazing. Best moment in Equestrian history. Yep. That's fantastic. So um, <laughs> favorite book of the Bible. Uh, we'll pop over back to Steve. Um, favorite book. I know you're going into Exodus, so you're all hyped up no. about that right now. But what's your favorite book overall after all these many years? Yeah, I get asked this all the time. My answer is always the one I'm preaching right now because I find like whatever I'm in, like every book I'm in, I'm like, wow, this is so much better than I ever imagined it was. And the more like diving deep mm -hmm. into it. so. Yeah, I find that really hard. I mean, we're just finishing off Romans right now. And so Romans has been a huge blessing. We're, uh, we're in like chapter 15 this week. So we're just like, just wrapping up a series that started in January. So Romans is phenomenal. I, I love preaching narrative though. Like, mm. so that's one of the reasons I'm amped about Exodus is to go from Paul's letter to, to go jump into narrative. Cause I feel like, um, I love story and I think, I, unfortunately in preaching, sometimes we take narrative and try and we wreck the narrative. We, we mm -hmm. almost wish that this wasn't a narrative. Let's turn it into three principles. And we're like, the Lord has given us narrative and poetry and, and all sorts of genres. And we almost uh, are trained in preaching that we don't enjoy the genres. We, we wish that these were just all, you know, everything was an epistle. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but actually unpacking narrative, retelling the story, helping people feel the impact of the story and its implications, the way and doing the biblical theology to tie it all to Christ is so enjoyable. So, so um, Old Testament narrative is a real highlight as well. So Ruth would be another book mm -hmm. that is amazing that way as a, a short Old Testament narrative that points to Christ in so many ways. And the story is so short, but so rich, so mm -hmm. deep. And um, there's so much there to explore and enjoy um, that it's just worth all the time and effort. That's fantastic. Kent, what about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Steve, on the Old Testament narrative being so um, underappreciated and underpreached. And then when you bring man, the glories of that, those texts to, to, the, to the body, there's just so much profit in it. And people just love 
sitting under those sections of God's word. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think a couple of books that come to mind, if I had to pick one Old Testament, one New Testament, uh, New Testament, I just have always loved Ephesians for how comprehensive it is, how much it just, the glories of the gospel, and then the practical implications for the Christian life. I mean, you just, that doesn't get to me any clearer than that. And um, so I, every time I, I drop into that book, I'm so encouraged. Um, and then on the Old Testament side, yeah, this is going to sound weird, but I really love Judges. So when I preached through Judges, I, I was like, man, I just can't believe how surprisingly good this is. And talk about wild stories, man. I'm like, yeah. it's just, we were rolling at a couple of points going through like Ehud and he's, you know, doing his deal with the king there and, and just stories that are so unbelievable. You can't yeah. even really believe they're in the Bible, but a little, little bit R-rated at times. <laughs> well, yeah, you have to kind of, I mean, my temptation is to kind of want to sanitize it for the kids, but like, Hey man, this is God's word. Right. So yeah. yeah and it just is the same yeah. thing that you were just describing running all of that through the scripture to see its fulfillment in Christ. It's just, it's uh, surprising and it's sweet. So yeah, that mm-hmm. book to me has been a blessing in the, in the recent path. I think Very anytime cool. you're, you're helping people see the flow and connections between scriptures. I, I find that people like, and maybe it's just the people I'm preaching and journeying with, but um, often see the old Testament stories as just disconnected narratives. They could be in any order, honestly, like they're just kind mm-hmm. of, it, there isn't even a, but helping them see how everything relates to everything else and how yes. it all flows to Christ and beyond. And, and all of a sudden, the lights come on, right? As you see the connections where, where I think a lot of people look at their Bible as a series and the narratives in scripture as just a series of disconnected, isolated stories. I'm not even sure which order they go in. Yeah. Um, and, and you kind of learn lessons from, yeah, I mean, Samson, what do we learn about Samson? Mm-hmm. You know, and, and just kind of each story on its own, not showing the flow of scripture. Yeah. So I find that so fruitful. Um, yeah where people don't often see those connections um, or yeah. haven't seen them. And then when they start, when you, the, the privilege of seeing them make those connections themselves, mm-hmm. that is such a delight. I mean, mm-hmm. just to see them doing their word work in that way. Yeah. Um, man, praise the Lord for that. And that's the spirit's work. I know it's also our privilege to equip the saints for the work of ministry in that way. And yeah, yeah, it's really, it's not always intuitive for them. But man, when those, like you said, the lights start turning on, they start making those connections themselves. It's, it's thrilling to see. Well, I feel like I, I grew up in the church, but I wasn't taught biblical theology. Like, no. I feel like I was taught stories and I was, I think I would say I was well taught. I probably learned more systematic theology and individual stories of scripture. And I, I knew the Bible and I knew systematic theology, but I didn't, I wasn't taught. And I don't know if biblical theology it, maybe this is just my story and and others have excelled in it over the years, but I feel like me discovering the connections between all the scripture and me uh, growing in that and then helping others see that has been just one of the real highlights of my, my teaching ministry. And as you said, seeing the lights come on for people. Um, so I don't know if that was a deficit in the era previous to me, but yeah. maybe that's just my perspective on it or my shallow experience but yeah. yeah no i think that's fair i i would agree with that too and just in my own context yeah. hmm. so hmm. two more questions one uh general interest and then uh one more serious so both of you guys are wearing wrist watches and um steve yours looks like it could have an altimeter in it i'm wondering if it does so i'm going to ask <laughs> both of you guys about your wrist watches <laughs> it does not it's just a Fossil watch? It's, it's, enorm- I don't know. it's like a it's like a billboard on your wrist. It's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's actually oh, not. Yeah. It's Good, it's man. it's very normal size. I'm a skinny dude, so is everything looks okay. big. Right. <laughs> it is big and chunky. My wife bought it for me many years ago, and it's it's a fossil watch. They last a long time. I think I was buying a watch a year, buying cheap yeah. watches, and she actually bought me a, a little bit nicer watch, right. and it's lasted me for a long time. So it's one of those things where you buy cheap and replace it constantly and yeah. regret it. And so yeah, that's awesome. Kent, what are you wearing? Uh, it's an Apple Watch. Yeah, it's okay. a it's an Apple Six. So I try to keep up on all the stuff. A bit of a Apple file, but I think it. You know, we have guys in the church who work at Apple and down at, in Silicon Valley, and so oh, wow. we we tend to kind of keep up on that kind of stuff a little bit. Plus, it just syncs up well with holding me accountable to to make sure I'm working out, staying active, keeping fit, that kind of stuff. 
so it just kind of pings me on those things. So I've, I've have had the Apple one and I think every generation since it's come out of the watch. So wow, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's me. No, it's helpful. The, uh, it's helpful. I had, the, I had the very first iPhone, um, that, that they came out with, which was unusual for me. Cause I was never like, I got to have one of these things, but I had to have one of those. So I got it. I don't know if you remember, but they came out, there were two, there was a four, four, megabyte i think at that time memory and an eight megabyte memory or gig maybe i don't know uh, and then shortly after the launch they dropped the four and reduced the price of the eight to what they've been asking for the four and that's when i bought so there you go i still have it it doesn't work but i still have it <laughs> uh so the last question and this is the more serious and so give us the condensed version of kind of how you heard about gcc and uh kind of what motivated you to explore and eventually join uh, can't go ahead. I, um, I first was introduced to great commission collective through Scott Hollingshead, who's okay. out here in Sacramento area. Um, he is a master seminary grad. So am I, we ended up being connected through a, a mutual relationship. And so we met for lunch. He was wanting to ask me about biblical counseling, which is something our church is a we're a biblical counseling training center. Um, in our region. And, and then I wanted to ask him about church planting. Mm -hmm. So we shared stories. And at the end of the, at the end of the conversation, I'm like, bro, you keep mentioning this great commission collective. Tell me more about that. I've never heard of it. Awesome. And, uh, and Scott was great. He didn't push it. Mm -hmm. um, he just said, Hey, you really need to connect with a guy named Dave Harvey, who of course I was familiar with. Mm -hmm. So connected with Dave and away we went. And awesome. um, so it's, it's been really, really a, an easy, smooth kind of on ramp into the GCC world. And, and uh, already bearing, like I said, a lot of fruitfulness out here in this region. So That's we have fantastic. been really grateful for that. We've been a part of GCC for almost almost a year now. Okay, so, very cool. Yeah. Now, Steve, you're technically GCC Canada. So what's your uh, what's your story about it? Yeah, it's kind of actually a long story, but um, I'll try and shorten it up as best I can. About five years ago, when I was pastoring in Vancouver, my wife and I, through some circumstance, were wondering if the Lord was leading us out of our current ministry at that time and because her family's all out here we wondered if we would be moving out here i had always felt like eventually when we leave our ministry this would be where we would land closer to her family i had a friend who was a pastor at um harvest bible chapel oakville which is the largest you now gcc church and, and an amazing church uh where robbie simons is planted and senior pastor so um my friend greg he passed my name on and their church one of their kind of key guys for church planting mm -hmm. contacted me. They invited us out for a weekend mm -hmm. to learn and would we be open to church planting with them? They had planted several churches at the time and were looking for church planters constantly. We were open to that. I had been praying about church planting, thinking about church planting for many years. It'd been on my heart, never, you know, hadn't been able to do it just in the Lord's providence, but it was something I valued. Right. So we came out and had it for out for a weekend and just experiencing the church, its leaders, the culture, the prayer nights, the Sunday mornings, we visit a couple of their church plants. And, and we walked away from that, that four, day, four or five days, or whatever, feeling like this is home. Like mm. I didn't know churches like this existed in Canada. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I had struggled. We had struggled in our denomination, always feeling like you're being attacked, always feeling like you are fighting uh, your own team mm. um, and kind of a black sheep for your theology and your priorities and but here a church that valued prayer and church planting dynamic worship phenomenal preaching biblical preaching reformed theology was like i didn't know there was churches like this in canada because there there aren't right yeah. and so mm -hmm. um uh, the harvest movement was growing like crazy in ontario but there wasn't anything out west right mm -hmm. now in the end th we they concluded that it wasn't really the right timing the lord wasn't really in it and we were disappointed but in hindsight it was true. It wasn't the right timing for us. We were about to adopt our youngest son and led into some challenging months. Um, some of the situations that we were wondering about like dramatically changed. And we ended up doing five more years, jo joyful years in ministry mm. in Vancouver. Wow. Was then called out here to be the successor to Pastor Paul Little after 32 years. And and the Lord was in that timing in, in a radical and beautiful way. And longer story there. But um just with changing situation with my, my youngest son's health and concerns about that and moving out here it made a lot of sense for that. And just a piece of where the church was at ready for it to transition. It was a lot wiser and better time. And the Lord protected us from an early exit and brought us to this later exit. But when we arrived here, uh, between when I kind of candidated was hired as the next senior pastor in this transition plan. And when we actually moved out, 
um, our elders were confronted by the denomination and essentially told, you need to get in or get out. And wow. we had struggled for many years, me and BC as well, dealing with a lot of the same issues, but mm-hmm. theological slide into a uh, embrace of a more of a theological liberalism, all sorts of issues that we were dealing with in our denomination around sexuality, morality, um, gender roles around the inerrancy of scripture, and so many kind of classic issues of theology, as well as a what I would call it a dangerously unbiblical charismaticism, just uh, embracing and pushing things like being slain in the spirit, speaking in tongues is normative for everyone. Prophecy will teach you how to prophesy. And if you aren't doing these things, the spirit's not in your churches. Wow. And these types of things we're really uncomfortable with and we're unsupportive of. And we kind of just, so both the church here in Georgetown and, and my church in BC, and, and honestly, there's a group of us that connected conservatives in the denomination, trying to encourage each other, trying to, because so many of us felt alone and attacked and isolated and didn't have anyone uh, when you're facing this stuff coming at you all the time. And so just trying to gather pastors. And that's how I got connected with this church and was called out here. But um, that kind of awkward dance of you're part of a group that you don't really support. You fund some things and not other things. Mm-hmm. Our elders were confronted and said, get in or get out. And and as individual pastors, we were told, you need to sign your allegiance saying that you will wholeheartedly support Wow. the mission and vision of, of what we're doing and raise generous support financially for it. And so our, or you'll lose your license. Um, and so we wrestled with that for months through prayer. We came to a unified place of saying, God is calling us to stand on our convictions, not our comfort come what may. And they own the deed to the land so they can take everything and we can lose everything. But our elders stood up and said, this is what God has called us to do. And our, our church family saw that and agreed with us. We had to, we're, we're elder led, but on this mm-hmm. particular thing, we had to vote on it. And something like 95% of our church family said, we're with you, even if it means we lose every penny and every, wow. every, every, you know, every piece of everything mm-hmm. and we're homeless. It's the right thing to do. And um, so we did that. And um, as we looked around and said, where do we fit? My experience with with Harvest Oakville from those five years earlier, Mm -hmm. as our elders are sitting around going, well, we don't want to be, we we don't, we want to be autonomous because we don't want this to happen to us again, where we could lose everything. And someone else tells you, here's your new theological statement and that hierarchy of the denomination we're part of. So we wanted to be autonomous, but we didn't want to be alone. We knew we needed collaboration, networking, Mm -hmm. encouragement, accountability. As we looked around Canada, where would we fit? My experience with um, what's now Hope Oakville told him, I, I, I know where we fit. Like, I, let me throw out something. And, and, uh, at that time, you know, between when I had come out before great commission collective had formed. And so okay. just some changes with great commission collective and the DNA of the churches here locally, where there's, uh, I think, I think it's like 16, 17 churches in the greater Toronto area, growing, thriving, planning churches. We looked around and said, these are guys we want to learn from. These are guys we want to work with, collaborate with, plant churches with. This is a group we can be all in with. We fit Mm -hmm. theologically. We fit philosophically. They're they're good churches. They're godly leaders. I'll throw in with that. And so we were eager to join GCC and did. It's been night and day from Mm -hmm. fighting in our own denomination, feeling sidelined to just feeling welcomed, encouraged. The partnership and collaboration has been a joy. It's awesome. Um, And so it's been for me, you know, in my, I've been in ministry like 16 years. This is the first time this last year has been the first time I felt a real joy about our affiliation and found Mm -hmm. it really fruitful, helpful, encouraging guys. I want to learn from, I'm asking questions like let's collaborate. Mm -hmm. So encouraged by versus always feeling like they're out to get me or we're, we're up, you know, we're, we're button heads. We don't see eye to eye. We don't really fit together. This isn't my tribe. I feel homeless in my own denomination. So, so for us, it was a challenging journey, but God was so good to us. So just providentially providing, even when we had to purchase back our own building, Mm. um, which was at times felt like this isn't going to work. We can't afford this. The market is crazy here. We already bought this building once. Can we repurchase our own building? But God provided and is providing. And best decision we could have made. God was in it and we're so thankful. So that's awesome. really glad. And, and GCC became the, the good landing spot for us. And we're really excited about it. Well, Stephen Kent, thanks for hanging out today. This has been really encouraging. And um, you guys are... Uh, you guys have great personalities. You, you probably hear that a lot, but it's it's good to uh, talk to guys that are a little bit fired up about 
a lot of different things. And uh, so I can't, I can't wait to eventually hang with you in person. And I don't know when that'll be yeah. for all of us at this point, but looking forward to that. And uh, thanks for hanging out. And God bless you both. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Launch, the GCC podcast. If you haven't subscribed already, why not take a moment to do that in your favorite podcast app? Also, rate and review the podcast when you get a moment. That helps us with search results and recommend us to your friends, maybe other pastors that you know who will benefit from the content from this podcast. Also, don't forget to check out our website if you haven't done that already. It's gccollective.org. That's gccollective.org. And there's a lot of helpful information. There's articles. There's how you can join the GCC, whether a church planter or an existing church, and plenty of other content that will help you grow spiritually and encourage you in your leadership journey.